guys welcome back to a to z dentistry and our today's topic is cellulitis versus abscess so without any further delay let's get started so the first differentiating point between cellulitis and abscess is the definition itself cellulitis is defined as a diffuse non suppurative and inflammatory reaction of the facial tissue planes now try to remember these words right the first one is diffuse that means it is not localized it is spread to distant places right therefore it is diffuse it is non suppurative that means there is no pus formation here and it is a typical inflammatory reaction meaning that all the inflammatory cells and their inflammatory by products will be involved here that means there is a major role of all kinds of leukocytes here right and this reaction is largely limited to the facial tissue planes that is it might be submucosal or subcutaneous or also it might involve the loose connective tissue now as it inherently involves the loose connective tissue therefore it is diffuse in nature right and this usually occurs because of bacterial odontogenic infection that means for an cellulitis to occur there should be some kind of odontogenic reaction happening already within the tooth right only then because of that constant uh, bacterial reaction of odontogenic origin cellulitis can occur moving to the definition of abscess abscess is basically defined as a thick wall cavity which contains pus now the note wording point here to note is that abscess is usually a well localized type of swelling we all might have encountered a case of dento alveolar abscess which is very common in pediatric patients right so it is a very localized kind of a swelling it is not diffuse as in case of cellulitis and it contains pus right as the definition says it is a thick wall cavity which contains pus now this pus is basically an exudate which is derived from the wbcs and the bacterial products in case of cellulitis it is a non suppurative time of infection wherein there is no formation of pus there is an inflammatory reaction however there is no formation of pus involved in case of cellulitis so by definition itself we can have two differentiating points here the first one being cellulitis is a diffuse kind of swelling whereas the abscess is largely a localized type of swelling second one being in case of cellulitis there is no pus formation it is a non suppurative type of a swelling whereas in case of abscess it is a suppurative kind of swelling wherein there is production of pus involved so at the bottom of the slide i have put up two pictures the first one represents a classic case of cellulitis wherein you can clearly see that the swelling is very diffuse it is involving the zygomatic region as well as complete eye and the next image is of an abscess wherein you can see that the infection is largely related to the tooth which is also the causative agent and it is a very small swelling right there is no diffuse swelling involved so this is how you can differentiate between cellulitis and abscess clinically so the next differentiating point between cellulitis and abscess is of duration cellulitis is a type of reaction which will last for about 3 to 7 days whereas abscess will last for about 5 days or more mostly it is greater than 5 days now this is because cellulitis is a very diffuse kind of inflammatory reaction right it is usually destroying all the loose connective tissue it is spreading to distant places and naturally it will take more time to cause such a large amount of destruction whereas abscess is a localized kind of swelling which is largely limited and our body can easily localize this kind of a swelling therefore it will usually last for more about 5 days moving on to the third differentiating point 
that is the size right the di overall dimensions so cellulitis is obviously larger in size whereas abscess is comparatively smaller in size and this is determined clinically right as we have already discussed cellulitis is a diffuse kind of a swelling right uh, which has a more amount of destructive potential therefore the size of the lesion will be very large cellulitis will involve more of a distance places right do remember that both of these things are originating from the chronic infection of the tooth itself but the destruction potential will be more in case of cellulitis right however in case of abscess the area which will be involved will be a very smaller in size the lesion overall will be very smaller in size when compared to that of cellulitis so i have put up two pictures here again as you can see in the first picture the lesion is involving wall of the zygomatic area it is also involving wall of the nose of one side and also the orbital area the periorbital area is largely involved in case of cellulitis in the lower picture uh, we can see that the abscess is largely related to a very small area as compared to that of cellulitis from this picture we can see that maybe the infection would have originated from molar or premolar area and it is largely limited to that area itself right it is involving the lower border of the mandible and hardly it is spreading to the angle of the mandible so largely it is a related type of a swelling whereas in case of cellulitis it is involving a much greater amount of area so this becomes our third differentiating point so moving on towards our next differentiating point that is based upon the localization so cellulitis as we have previously covered is a diffuse kind of a swelling which does not appreciate any kind of boundaries it will freely invade the submucosal as well as subcutaneous plane and therefore it will result in a very diffuse kind of a swelling however in case of abscess the swelling will be very circumscribed it will be a purely localized kind of a swelling right so our differentiating point would definitely be on the basis of the localization in which the cellulitis will be a diffuse kind of a swelling whereas our abscess will be circumscribed or localized type of a swelling moving on towards our fifth differentiating point that is based upon the palpation so cellulitis is basically hard and tender on palpation if you remember we have already studied in third year that cellulitis it's somewhat a cardboard type of a swelling right so it is hard in consistency and it will be tender however abscess will be fluctuant we can elicit fluctuation in case of abscess but fluctuation cannot be elicited in case of cellulitis so this becomes our fifth differentiating point between cellulitis and abscess so our sixth differentiating point between cellulitis and abscess is based upon the overlying skin in case of cellulitis the skin will be thickened and it would be cardboard like hard as we have already covered in the consistency part cellulitis has a hard kind of consistency which is more of a cardboard like type of consistency the skin will be thickened right however in case of abscess it will be undermined and the skin will appear shiny see now this difference arises because our cellulitis is a superate non superative kind of a swelling right there is no pus formation so there is no case of fluctuation and there is also no case of skin appearing undermined or shiny right however in case of abscess there is a definite amount of pus formation so because of that pus formation the skin will appear undermined and the overlying surface will appear shiny so our seventh differentiating point is based upon the temperature of the overlying skin right so in case of cellulitis the temperature of the overlying skin will be warm right it will uh, feel as slightly warm or slightly rise of temperature as compared to that of the adjacent skin however in case of abscess the temperature would be just moderately warm 
right so our sixth differentiating point is based upon the temperature of the overlying skin and this you can appreciate by palpation moving on towards our next differentiating point that is based upon the loss of function now here we are discussing about a disease right which is largely involving dysfunction of the tissues itself within which the disease is being uh, present and as well as the adjacent tissues which are being secondly infected because of that odontogenic infection so in case of cellulitis the loss of function is severe now this is because the swelling is diffuse right it is involving a uh, greater amount of skin surface area therefore obviously the loss of function would be very severe in case of cellulitis as we have previously seen in the pictures if the swelling arises because of the odontogenic infection arising from premolar and molar, molar tooth it will not only involve the zygomatic area but also it will extend towards the periorbital region and the swelling will largely involve the periorbital area as well right so right from its uh, originating point that is from the roots of molar and premolar it is going all above right even far from the uh, apex of the tooth it it is involving the periorbital area that's a greater amount of uh, skin surface as well as adjacent tissue involvement therefore the loss of function is severe in case of cellulitis however it in case of uh, abscess it would be moderately severe now this is because abscess is a very localized type of a swelling right so obviously the loss of function would be limited to that particular area itself and therefore the loss of function is moderately severe in case of abscess moving on towards our eighth differentiating point that is based upon the tissue fluid now whenever we uh, see a swelling one of our investigative test is that of aspiration right we tend to aspirate the swelling so in case of cellulitis on aspiration we will get a zero sanguine kind of a fluid right and i have put up a picture at the end to it so in the first picture this is how a zero sanguineous fluid looks like it is somewhat red to maroonish in color right so this is the kind of fluid uh, which is obtained on aspiration of cellulitis however in case of abscess the type of tissue fluid which uh, we will obtain is largely pus that means it is a type of exudate which is derived from dead and dying neutrophils as well as other types of wbcs also it will be involving remnants of bacteria under bacterial products so this is how pus looks like it is somewhat yellowish to straw colored right and it has a uh, somewhat a uh, thick consistency as compared to zero sanguineous fluid the viscosity also is more of pus as compared to that of the zero sanguineous discharge so uh, based upon certain uh, lab investigation also or uh, chair side investigation also we can differentiate between the cellulitis and abscess the note worthy point here is that we have already previously discussed uh, in case of cellulitis it is a non suppurative kind of a swelling so therefore the uh, aspirate what we are obtaining cannot be pus right because the definition itself says that it is non suppurative there is no pus formation therefore there is uh, no chance of getting any pus on aspiration however in case of abscess there is pus formation so on aspiration will definitely uh, yield pus moving on towards our eighth differentiating point which is basically an extension of our seventh differentiating point so previously we have studied about the tissue fluid which we obtain after aspiration of the swelling in case of cellulitis cellulitis it was zero sanguineous as in case of abscess it was pus right so in case of cellulitis the bacteria which we will obtain after culturing that fluid would be mixed kind of bacteria that is there will be presence of aerobic as well as anaerobic bacteria right so cellulitis is largely a mixed type of odontogenic infection however in case of abscess the majority of the microbes involved are anaerobic 
सो दिस इज ऑल्सो डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग पॉइंट बिटवीन सेल्युलाइटिस एंड एप्सिस बेस्ड अपॉन द लेबोरेटरी इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो अवर नाइन्थ डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग पॉइंट इज बेस्ड अपॉन द डिग्री ऑफ सीरियसनेस ऑफ सेल्युलाइटिस वर्सेज एप्सिस so in case of cellulitis as we also have studied that the loss of function is very severe in case of cellulitis right so obviously the degree of seriousness is very severe in case of cellulitis as compared to that of abscess in case of abscess the degree of se uh, se seriousness is moderate to severe right as you know that uh, in case of cellulitis the inflammation and the infection is very very diffuse so the degree of seriousness is also very severe right it can lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis as well which is a very well known complication of cellulitis however in case of abscess it is rare so the degree of seriousness is moderate to severe in case of abscess Oh, so we have arrived at the last section of the video, which is the section of our exam tips. Till now, we have already been finished with all the major differences between cellulitis and abscess, and I hope you all understood it very well. Now, under this exam tip section, very quickly, I'll be telling you some important exam tips, right? So, first uh, thing is that you can definitely draw diagrams for cellulitis as well as abscess. In this slide, I have put up two very simple uh, diagrams which you can easily draw in your exams. The first one is for cellulitis, right? Wherein you can clearly see that it is a very diffuse kind of a swelling. Uh, in case of abscess, uh, it is a localized kind of a swelling which is clearly demonstrated in this picture. Also, you can do the same type of labeling in your diagram to make it look more presentable, right? Apart from this, I have prepared an infographic card, right? For differentiation between cellulitis versus abscess, I have put up 7 to 8 uh, major differentiating features which are quite easy to remember. Uh, and I have made it a bit uh, easy and a bit more animated so that you can uh, easily remember this for your exams. So this was all about cellulitis versus abscess. I hope you all understood this topic very well. And if you like this video, kindly like, share and subscribe to my channel. For more such videos, kindly press the bell icon for receiving the notifications uh, for more such interesting videos. Till then... Bye-bye. Take care. This is Dr. Snail signing off.